even making it into the LAN tournament later on this June uh, would be a bit more important. But that being said, though, this round starting off. T side, really gone, pits to 50, sent on a solo mission into wars. And it's a miracle that he actually gets away with a kill. Yeah, very, very sloppy fight. And Guild Eagles, they've got a prong in A to try and keep them busy. Belchinok immediately taking him out, however, means that the B side players have nothing to worry about, and Kickert will be smurfing on them for a moment. A couple kills collected, but that's still a 1v2. So not exactly the cleanest round in the world, but GXX, he's got a chance to fight back. Headshot found, but Duelies will overwhelm. And now they're probably going to have to force the issue over towards A, and that's where there is a significant level of firepower and utility available. They've got a smoke, they've got a nade, and Belchinok, that's some good rifling right there, and Patsy should be able to add one more to the tally, anticipating more to come through from Donut. But the big issue is the players coming in from main, 3v3. As the retake already starts to ensue, before the bomb's even planted, one with a recovered M4 is able to find one. Synopsy increasing the number of deaths on the CT side, and Arfrost, he's got the worst weapon for a 1v3. Still trying to pop ahead, but Guild Eagles, they've already got it done with one's position. Yeah, flash Immediate upset. Mission coming in. Rotations, though, being more... We're just getting comfortable position. Smoke and force the short side. Molotov opens the back of the pillar. Does he get away with a kill? He's gonna get cleared out. And Jerry does win that fight, and this is big. Recon was all alone. He can pick up that M4. All they need to be worried about it. Kicker goes down. Bomb will get plot thrust on the rotation. It's gonna do even more damage. He can still go very, very wrong for Guild Eagles. Velchinok, good spray, but Jerry's around the corner. And with just pistols. They've managed to topple Guild Eagles. But we are going head for head. Mm. Nicely done from Scenari. Oh, Jerry's AK is actually overwhelmed. I think he didn't have head armor there, which is kind of surprising. Did he forget to buy or... Not sure, but... That does come back to bite him. Belchinok with the, the combo. Of his teammate having an MP9 around the corner certainly makes it a little bit easier on the duels. Juan wanting to pop through the smoke, but Belchinok's already repositioned. Yeah, yeah Belchinok's realized it, right? The moment that you hear the flashes towards B and then the Oprah catcher trying to sneak their way out of A, you know they will be forced to commit to that B. You know they were trying to just open up some space for the A play potentially, and they rotate back. Also drops flat row. It's just GXX left, but the mo forced him right. Into the crosshair of Patsy. Perfectly executed by Parry Vision. Really gonna end up coming out in full force. Jerry. He's got two players to contend with very soon. Shadow betrays and he gets a bit of a heads up. Synopsy. Quite heavily tagged up. So he can't really go for any individual duels here. In fact, even if he teams up with Scenari, he could very easily be victimized by one spray. Scenari in the meantime, though, he is getting some exploration going on. Oh, that's big. They're, oh, oh, really good gap. Love the fact that he immediately recognizes it and exploits it. I'm not sure if he knows that there's already a player in the A bomb site, though. Belchinok catches Synopsy. You know, Scenari might be able to get the kill, but with 10 seconds to go, he's got a lot of work to do here, Ted. Yep, even the top on the bomb, 8 seconds. He's heard a player in towards Donut now, but there's not enough time. He needs to try and get the hell out of there, and ooh, he's just barely able to in. It keeps them afloat for quite a while. He can draw, drop over rifles even if they lose a round. He can always keep that off coming. It's scary, but so is Synopsy. Unfortunately, it's getting a little messy over here. And Cave oh. Kicker, what a oh. transfer to find two. And that completely shuts down Guild Eagle's initial approach. Synopsy and GXX now wanting to poke around and find out over towards the B bomb site still. Is there going to be yet another victim walking the plank towards Cave? No, Synopsy refuses to f die there. AWB shot, uncharacteristically missed by Arfrost. And he's still expecting there to be a player towards ramp. And this is this is a good decision from PowerVision. They just want to play it together, want to make sure they don't give in 1v1s away. But now in 15 seconds, nothing's going on. They've spotted Molotov in towards long too. They know it's B play, but look at the tease. They're so paranoid about a potential quick fight. Yeah, and the thing is, right, Arfrost no hasn't way. even shown his position That's just it. yet, so there's no way they can cross. 7-1, to one, Paravision, they've been looking absolutely surgical. 
Is that like the, the advertisement to like a dating platform? Like tigers in your area? <laughs> like what? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds horrible. Oh, yeah. Playful big cats. Oh. It, on the other side of the smoke, this managed to shut down Belchanok. And as you pointed out, that previous round for Guild Eagles was much needed, but the need to make it on the board. And it's going to be different if you're feeding those players kills after both kills. And it was the big surprise factor towards the back of the side. This one just falls apart completely. The good part about it is that if if obliterated on the map, a bit easier to reset, and that's a good pick up by Synopsy. I mean, they can still get away with three rounds if they win the pistol and the conversion thing in the second half. They they are on paper competitive, but they need this round for sure. I mean, you're being quite generous with the conditions here, but we'll see. Flash is good. Juan is able to turn it, though. Quickly finds the headshot in a sloppy spray. And they are just going to have to throw themselves out the situation because they know that this is, in fact, the last round coming around the corner. Punished by the AWP of GXX. He's recently been a bit absent for the team. Our Frost, his op is great, but up against two players, that would be impossible. As the sandwich comes through, Guild Eagles, at least they're going to dignify the first half with three rounds. Well, pistol round is, of course, off the essence here. Guild Eagles, they've got all the players in the right spot, at least, because there is going to be a B-site hit, and they're taking quite a bit of damage because before they've actually dialed the numbers. Belchinox slowly sliding forward. He's found two oh, headshots, no. and they're just being tagged upon tagged. There's also a bit of team damage thrown in there. Kicker, happy to steal some of the kills. Wow. But those headshots from Belchinox, they were super-duper important. And Paravision... I'm not sure if ideas will be sufficient in allowing the defense, but that movement, it's, it's a little sloppy from Patsy. Ends up exposing himself to Temple. That might just be the first step they need to start to take in their big climb to try and get a victory. But the problem is that this is honestly perfectly played by the A-side player. He's going to keep them busy, st sticks around like Belchinok. He has played them like a fiddle. He keeps them so busy that... B site is pretty much a ghost town. Despite the advantage, Guild Eagles, they, they're being toyed with. Jerry, another kill. I mean, a 4v3 quickly turns into a, to, to a 1v3. Oh, he didn't see him. He's running back. He didn't, he didn't see towards around putting mm -hmm. the ball. This is so awkward for Guild Eagles. Keeping them a little busy. And you know, they went for like two double peaks or triple peaks into A main. It kept them occupied for so damn long. And then... There's a bit of a jiggle coming out from Sinari, and he will soon have to contest the AK. The teammate coming through as well. Really good flashbang from Synopsy. Unfortunately, Kickert has his number dialed in, and he just pressed call. Oh, and our Frost, it. yeah, he just makes quick work of them. Synopsy, nothing he can do. Yeah, perfect bait. The two players in towards middle feel pressure to make a move. Their teammate was all but surely this is going to be Guild Eagles' map pick. Go in favor of Parry Vision. A 12-3. Turn into a 13 3 right now with our frost. Can Harry Vision have made a statement going into fight of the group stage here at the compass? Right. Might want to regress A, but they've definitely kept their options open with a player tucked into B. Yeah, yeah. it's just back towards middle though. It's you know, making his way in towards camera any moment now. Kicker is going to be all alone. He needs something special here. Flash going to. Blind Keys Kicker needs to kill and then to try and stay alive, but he's just been forced outside. Go down. Synopsy picks up the kill onto Jerry. And even though it's a 5 versus 3, this round should be, well, pretty much done and dust. Coming back into this since the third. Um, I'm, I mean, they've got the pistol round now, right? So obviously I have some extra okay. info to go off of. <laughs> yeah, the pistol round's already like an, at least a, like a 10% buff, right? And considering I thought they were at like 5% before, I'm going to give them a 15%, so. And that's only on the... Not sure if that's going to be replicated here, however. CT side, definitely a bit of a tricky beast. And speaking of beasts, Art Frost is happy to make it even Steven after that first casualty. Juan Flatro actually wanting to take the liberty to push through the smoke and I'm not sure if they're gonna expect him at all 
I think our Frost might be surprised if he eventually pops through. Oh, and is actually quite close. Ooh. Oh, yeah, he doesn't have the timing. Shot to the side of the head. Guild Eagles, they've gotten such a nice little start going. And there is nobody available on the B-bomb site to immediately try and stop this carnage. I, 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 Thank God you saved that. It's all oh, my favorite combination. The defense can entirely focus its attention onto B main. This fight is everything. Jerry, does he clear it out? Absolutely, oh. he does. It was a late readjustment, but still confirms the kill. Oh, the fact that he's able to get the kill off the adjustment completely changes everything. Still makes him relevant for this eventual B push about to come in 20 seconds. So they've got to be. Ooh, they've got to be quick, and they are swift with the first kill. Bomb spotted on the cross. Kicker, really good adjustment of the crosshair, but he still needs to find the opera. And he needs to wait for our Frost to start turning the corner. First Massive. skill found. And they at least know that the final player has stuck himself back into B main. Problem is, Synopsy simply doesn't have a lot of HP. If they tap the bomb, it could be over. Synopsy, he's just holding the line. He's expecting them to be there. And all it takes is a single bullet. Paravision, back on their feet. It's actually a little scary if you're in the shoes of the Eagles right now, because that is so little space, so little info being gained. But with 45 seconds to go, that is still an opener from Regon. At least it's going to shift around the pieces a little bit. The bomb still needs to be collected. And they have thrown out at least a piece of util on the A bomb site. The eventual push does seem like it's going to be heading on over to the B bomb site, and they are now ready and waiting with open arms dead. Belchanok. Posted on the angle. Smoke in front, but he really needs to just take the attention away so Jerry can strike. There goes one. Refrag is instant oh. and Scenario just shuts down Belchinok straight away. Not a single kill for him. And in the meantime, Patsy hits the ground too. This one is just falling apart. It's just crumbling for Parry Vision. They had all the right pieces, but they just crumble. Very uh, reminiscent of the first map. We're expecting Parry Vision to be the big dogs on this one, but no. The AVP is towards the correct side of the map. Nades coming up. Rotations will be quick. Our Frost needs to be ready for the flank in towards middle, but Patsy just down one. The refrag comes in. Our Frost, a good angle to work with. Boost on top of the smoke, but they need to be careful. Synopsy strikes from behind. There's oh. one. There's a second. Switches to the pistol for a third. And this round has just gone left. That has just gone right for Guild Egos. And then he can try and go for a 1v1, but. And at least he's got a kid available. Ooh, that's info. No, that's a big missed shot. At least he'll catch one, but the op waiting for him certainly won't be missing. I think they might even consider pushing through. There is a player in connector here. Sonari cannot afford to die here. He needs to be the second prong that enables this push. Here they come. Ooh, oh, no. great shot from Synopsy. And Belchinok does manage to get his part of the duel, but that's okay. The Synopsy has done quite a bit of the heavy lifting straight into cons. It's still very doable for the CTs if they can get back on their feet. GXX holding the cross from Ninja. R Frost developing a sight line here. He still needs to watch out for GXX. They're a little antsy about getting the bomb down, but with 30 seconds, a move needs to happen soon. Shadow betrays, offers down, and shouldn't be too long before Synopsy will follow soon. Comes around, wait, wait hang on, he gets a <laughs> shot, but no, just not, just not high enough HP to survive Patsy's menace. Oh, they have no idea? Regan. Yeah. Oh my Regan. goodness. He's just so forward. There's, there's, there's simply no expectation here. Ooh, oh! Despite there's the fact more. that he shoots a closer target. No way. They've just ripped him apart. Regon's position, that's everything. It doesn't necessarily mean that there wasn't a good Eagles player on that A-bomb side, but Belchanov was just not ready. He didn't think it was a possibility for Regon to just be ahead of the play so much, get into a position, and then just, oh, just get that equalizing kill. But the play coming up and towards the B-bomb side, and this time around, Guild Eagles not really taking their sweet time with it. Oh, Belchanov actually gets so much damage going around the smoke. Sinari does get a bit of a consolation prize here. But it's definitely quite heavily in the favor of the CTs, and they're just getting ready to rally the troops before they throw themselves out one last hurrah to secure a fourth round before they head on over to the advantageous side. GXX, invisible barrier, op is good there. 
And it's just going to be so hard to try and get on the bomb. They've got no utility. They need to kill at least one of these players before they can start to feel comfortable. Looking to try and tap the bomb. They're still unsure of where that second player is. And that should pretty much be checkmate. Unless we see something crazy from Paravision. They're both getting ready to swing oh in together. God. But those are kills in synchronicity. And that is great work being done by Paravision to get the fourth round on the board. Now, the B presence should start to kick in. The bomb is still patiently waiting outside main. With 55 seconds to go, they need to start getting a little bit more space. This is perfect timing from Paravision. Look at that. They're getting antsy about the rotations. GXX, however, he's anticipating them. That is two heads on the table. Our Frost simply doesn't get enough done. And in a 2v4, Guild Eagles might be making it a whole lot more convincing. One from the side of the head. Patsy does get one, but it is not enough. Guild Eagles. Beepop. Oh, yeah. Beepop's coming through. Tech 9 in the hands of Belchinok. A flash is good, but they're a little too slow on this, Ted. And you gotta be a lot faster if you want a surprise. What? Doesn't matter to them, though, because Jerry's already found two. Buying time behind the pillar. Synopsis trying to get them off the bomb. He's run out of bullets. And Patsy still trying to fight back a little bit. Trying to spam through the wall. Isn't going to pay any dividends. No Patsy, Tech 9 comes out once again, and he's found more. Three kills for the man, and Jerry with two. Paravision. And they've Pat at least feigned presence into A, but the full commitment isn't going to come through. Oh, Patsy. Spotted oh. out. Not really tagged down too heavily, and Synopsis thinking about giving him that fight, which is a little bit of a risk, but it's a risk that pays off. He gets the kill, and he's going to keep on pushing. Now this is really risky. Now this is too much. Arfro shuts him down, but in the meantime, Belchinok will hit the ground up against the AVP of GXX. So this one is looking much better here for Guild Eagles, but they still need to deal with Arfrost and Jerry. And you have to be careful, Arfrost. <clears throat> Open hand, no one in towards the back of the bomb site. He doesn't know that yet, but the rotations are arriving. He will need something spectacular if he wants to take this one over the line. Unfortunately, 15 seconds simply won't pay the bill, and they are gonna try to throw themselves at the situation, but nothing to do when you simply don't have the clock on your side winning a tournament or qualifying for a tournament those are the things that could change things up for you just flip the script completely mm -hmm. so you do need Being able to Ooh. gonna have to hold that thought here ted because this is getting a little spicy here on the a bomb site Sinari does find a kill before they even get the bomb down. Synopsy being a problem. Patsy caught by the smoke being popped by the nade. Look at Jerry. And Jerry, yeah, he might just be problematic here, but he's being watched. GXX still looking to find him. Jerry a little worried about trying to permeate through the smoke. Our Frost being able to find a kill might just incentivize Jerry into trying to go for a bit of a peek as well. Finally, the MAC-10 is unveiled, but shut down by the op. Our Frost. He needs to show what that AWP is made of. One versus two, GXX afraid of pushing. Oh, oh, that movement! Glock has been brought out, and that buys enough time for Regon to be part of the conversation. Guild Eagles. GXX has been going wild. Tenopsy was getting so much rifle redone on the T side. We need somebody to step up from Paravision as well. B-pop coming through. Smoke is popped by the nade, but those two kills from Jerry are exactly what I'm looking for. Sinari and Regon, uphill battle for them to find. At least they've taken the first step. But they'll be backing off. They know that this is a bit of a losing battle. Weapon reprioritize. And as Arfrost is trying to run away with the AWP, no, he'll be chased down. Regon going straight into connector, but switching weapons, not the best of idea. Yeah, Four he round wanted deficit to give it a now. go. Such a deep dig into their wallets. They're definitely hoping that it pays off. Oh, one is completely lost. Shut down. Patsy, he got the A's before, but now unsuccessful. Regon's been able to find two, but they still need to get past GXX, and they will That's clear it. that hurdle. With six inches of leverage there, easy. Bounce over him. Synopsy, Sinari. I'm not sure if, if they even want to go for it, but that range advantage with the M4 certainly makes it possible. Kickguard and Artfrost. They've got to be careful. This could actually be shut down by Guild Eagles right now if they're able to go for a successful retake. And this player on no Ninja, way. you can't afford to miss that. Kickert is down, and Arfrost needs to go big. He's a talented opper, and he needs to show it right now. Sinari, so little HP. Tap of the bomb. He's got a kit. Arfrost, he's going to keep one foot through the door, and that is enough to dissuade Sinari 
from trying to push it. Wow. And that's what Regon does. Get shut down by the OP. And that's going to trigger the B play now. Hold on. Yeah, 30 seconds to go. Mid presence is also culminating from the CT side, so they need to do something fast for the info. Smoke is gonna block scenario. Ewan is going big oh. and Guild Eagles. That's exactly what they needed. A third from him! And he has definitely saved them from what could have come. Arfrost now wants to throw himself at it. 15 seconds to go. No way he can get this done. Bomb is firmly in his hands, but he needs to find two. He knows there's a player behind the banner, but he sprays both of them down. I cannot believe we are going to overtime. No way in hell he just did that. No way in hell they allowed him to do that. Flash doesn't phase them. They haven't Synopsis. been spotted though. And this is the big issue, right? Synopsis is trying to hold the cross, but eventually on 30 seconds he hasn't seen anything. He might have to give it away. Snary now spotted out. A little bit late with the U2. Needs a double and gets only one, but the Molotov will do the job. Missed shot by GXX though, and somehow... Belchinok is still making this one around. 20 seconds, and he needs another one versus three. And surely this one is not going to be possible. Team Flash coming in. And wait a second. Surely not another one versus two on 15 seconds. Surely no way. not. Surely not. And he knows where the final one is because of the Flash. Eight seconds, though. He needs to get the kill. He's going to cross towards the back of the bomb. No way. The bomb. <laughs> I respect the effort so much. That was so nicely played by Belchinok, but the... But that has been all over the place. Truthfully, all over the place. Nice shot. <clears throat> oh, killed Eagles. Looked like a pretty comfortable round, surprisingly, but a 1v2 still serviceable for our Frost. He was responsible for that 1v3 earlier. Oh, the, the, the bomb is just too far away now. And finding They're going to start thinking about it. Of course. This is, like, that's the only place he can be in now. Our Frost. First kill no foul. Way, right? No way. He's close enough to actually get the bomb. And he should be able to plan safe. No. He's got the cognizance to realize that the final player is probably no. closer to main. Our Frost might just be threading the needle here. The whole ruse goes all the way around, and now this is doable. He's even got a little smoke to make it questionable for Synopsy. Just looking to find info. Synopsy, he caught out. He spots the shadow. Missed shot, though. Our Frost. That's a big whiff, but he no! does get a second opportunity, and he capitalizes. Our Frost, what a menace. How many rounds? How many clutches? How many times are you going to let him... And once again, they're just playing it really slow. No one wants to be the first one to go down in a round like that, but it will be the play in towards the A-bomb side. And this is where Darfrost resides. AVP, he's going to get smoked all, but still, they're walking into his domain. Can he do it again? Oh, this lurk smoke is everything, but our frost will catch Sinari through it. Patsy, his timing is perfect to protect oh. the opera. Can't pull out the pistol in time, but that's enough work being done. Now, Belchinok and Jerry have a very strong fighting chance to get back into the A bomb site. Flank coming through as well, but the flash gives away the position. Juan Flatro playing close, could get caught out. GXX, important kill, but Jerry might still be able to get it done, getting ready for the wide swing, but he needs to find the rifler first. He's still waiting. They have no info on him. Jerry swings out, caught by the op, and Guild Eagles extend play. This is risky. They're kind of relying on their mid players to be useful here. Patsy, anti flash is perfect, and it's not even going to be needed. Oh. Two kills for him, and that is a complete shutdown from Paravision. I was going to say that, but the tease, they immediately bounce back. GXX still trying to find the M4. Shot missed, fed into the pillar. And now two-man flank Wait. will be really hard to contend with. Jerry in the back oh. lines. The op becoming part of the conversation. No, Kicker still needs to find one. And it's a 1v1 to keep Guild Eagles alive. It's everything on GXX. He showed up, but Kicker looks away. The shadow's oh. going to help, and GXX takes us all the way to double OT. Arfrost AWP, though, that could be a problem. Never mind. An uncharacteristic miss shot does mean that some more time is allowed. Arfrost still trying to hold it down. Flash to buy them some space. But that also gives up position. Never mind, Belchinog doesn't care if his position's given up. Oh, he still wait. wants to be in the party. Why are they planting the bomb? Guild Eagles 
You gotta clear him out first. There's a gap in the smoke. Belchinok, still sticking around, is waiting for the smoke to fade. And as he finds yet another player, he's gonna try and find him. He's gotten three kills, but that's still not enough. A 2v2 still at play. It slows down for a bit, but Flutro can again makes himself relevant. And two kills will mean that Guild Eagles... It just feels like it's a massive exchange of fights all of the time. There's people going huge, people missing shots. Then capitalizing on other chances. Belchanok now with an AVP, something that we haven't seen yet, but Ooh. he's gonna get tested. He gets the first one, but Jerry completely exposed, and this will collapse, but Kicker fights with a massive triple kill from the back of the side. Kicker, where does that come from? Four kills to shut it all down. And it is allowing simultaneously Paravision to try and get some control in towards B. And look at what they're doing. Putting pressure in towards Nectar. Putting pressure in towards B main. You're trying to bait a reaction. And you're successful in doing so. Synopsy goes one for one in towards middle. And this is good for Paravision. Oh, Jerry. Very important kill. Regon. That had to be a double. If they wanted to make it competitive, B-Site fully up for grabs, open for business. And those are some transactions that Sinari won't be happy with. Does have to throw himself at it anyway, because it is the third round, and he is greeted by a headshot. Wind it up again, take it for a spin. You can definitely see six more rounds coming through from these teams. The old Eagles, they are getting a little tired of this. There you go. Yeah, information play is made, and because they've been able to clear out B, now they should be able to dedicate more resources to the A-bomb site. Getting ready to pop in. Paravision, that's the util. Patsy, first man in. Opera's caught, and he's still checking oh. for the bomb site. Scenario dying means that Paravision might just be closing it out in two. This needs to be a monster oh. retake. Jerry gets a little antsy, goes forward to throw the Molotov. Nearly caught out, but it doesn't matter. Flatro and Synopsy, they're desperately trying to come back into this. Eagles, they've held on for so long. It doesn't matter if killing Eagles is outlawed because Guild Eagles are now extinct. From this tournament, Paravision 2-0. Oh my goodness. And that was that was the less clean. That was the dirtiest 2-0 you see all day, ladies and gentlemen. Probably a week, especially. Jerry, welcome Hello, to the guys. broadcast. And congratulations on your victory. Hello. Man, that was such a fun game to watch. You know what? First, I need to thank you for providing that action. Because, <laughs> damn, that was so much fun to commentate on. And it was a great game. But, I'm like, we've got a couple questions for you. Because we'd love to see it through the through your lens. You know, I personally don't care that much about, the, about map number one. But map number two. I could see your camera. I, I know that you were losing your mind. What was going on in the co communications of the team when that clutch happened? Uh, the which one? Uh, on 11, 12? Our Frost 1v3. Sorry, I get it. There's been many clutches, but yeah. yeah. You know when yes, our Frost was yes. able to get it in connector? <laughs> uh, I, I said there's still nerves. Still nerves. Let us say like that. But uh, in generally, uh, as you mentioned, our communication was pretty good. And uh, across all of the game, there were so many frustrating situations when the Guilty Eagles got some extra space, like Regan moved into the city or something, when John Florata killed me through the smoke on where, <laughs> or how they did like an incredible spray transfers with double, triple kills that uh, just destroyed us, actually. And uh, I think uh, all across the map, we were communicating good. We were making almost all of the decisions were good. And uh, we were always saying, like, guys, we're doing good, but they are just uh, super aim guys. We, like, <laughs> what can you do? It's first person shooter, first of all. If you had shot, you, you win. <laughs> so I think uh, by decision making communication, we were good. And they were good as well. But uh, that, that was all about the clutches. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, it was a crazy game, and I guess you can't really be sad at them hitting headshots after you had Patsy and uh, Arfros do what they did on that second map either. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, the current team and the situation that, uh, that, that the lineup has been in, because uh, you yourself are not a guy that loves changes too much, or at least that's the opinion I've gotten over the years, right? You stuck with one organization across six years you were pretty much Mr. Forza, right? So then you leave, now you're in your new project, but there's been a lot of uh, a lot of roster changes in Parivision for the last couple of months. Now you got Belchanok back. 
Uh, just talk me through your, your opinion on the current mixture of players. Do you feel like you guys can actually stick as a five-man lineup right now? And uh, do you see a way for this lineup to keep on existing for a couple months so you can uh, show us the potential that it's got? Uh, answering to your question, yes, I see this lineup as the five uh, good players because uh, all we were looking for all this time, it was consistency, firepower and firepower, I think, in the current meta when you have like uh, Mer24, it's, uh, I don't know, it's really hard. If you lose pistol, if you don't do insane, if you don't win 1v2, if you don't win 2v2, if you can't uh, convert some crazy rounds like we did with Tech Nines uh, when we lost our pistol at 8-4 against Guild Eagles on Anubis. If you can't convert that with some incredible Tech 9 or Deagle headshots, it's really hard to play right now, at least for me, because there before, uh, I, in all of my rosters, I always had uh, a lot of firepower. And here, mm. I think, now we got the kind of balance between smart playing and firepower. And uh, there is so much to do uh, road so far, yeah, <laughs> because... Uh, there is uh, on high level there is not always a firepower that helps you we will need to get uh, more good on our calls on our uh, decision making inside the game for ctnt sites and uh, go back to, back to forth uh, i should say that uh, i'm really hope we will stick in this particular roster because now i'm feeling i'm feeling mm. like this one is better than everyone before I think we're just, you know, puzzled together. There before, we were missing some puzzles, I think. But now, uh, okay, I'll say that. But now I think we're sticking in. We're good. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully uh, no jinx in it. Yeah, well, congratulations, Jerry, <laughs> once again for making it to the playoffs. I was just going to say, uh, how are you feeling about your chances in the playoffs? I'm sure you already have a decent idea of the types of teams that are going to be attending. So, you know, uh, talk to me a, a little bit about, you know, like, How's your prep and stuff for playoffs and how, how you feel going into it? Actually, uh, I think in playoffs uh, we will try to do as much damage as possible because now we're working on some... Uh, we're not working on some new things. We're just trying to improve what we have right now. And uh, in playoffs there will be... A little, I, I don't know exact teams, but I think there will be good teams. And uh, it's always hard to beat the team that is playing like together a lot and you are just or the half of the... Not, uh, I'll not say mix, but uh, once you switch the player, it's uh, hard to get back on track on what, what you have done before. And uh, also, we will have like six official matches in a row. Like maybe you remember Aurora had there before. They were playing like two best of threes and they... Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it will be all about our ability to adapt and to be f fresh when you have a lot of games in a row. So... I will believe in it. I will believe in it. We will do a lot of damage in playoffs, answering to your question. All right. You said you're going to do a lot of damage. You touched upon firepower. Obviously, when you say firepower, I guess the main people that come to mind are Patsy and Bochanok, right? Especially on the rifle right now, if, you're, if we're not talking about the AVP of Arthros. Uh, how have you found it to actually combine those two guys? Because they're pretty similar in their play style, right? I mean, Patsy is a lot more experienced, but they, they do feel like the same player at times. So is it hard to actually control that wilderness, the fact that both of them can be really wild and uncontrollable at times with the rifles? Uh, I should say that Pats actually are pretty calm and uh, he's full control okay. of himself. He's uh, very, like, professional, let's say like that. He's not doing, mm -hmm. like, uh, stupid mistakes. And uh, as you saw, there before the Belchenok, uh, we are playing B with him on Anubis, and it was, was incredible hard for him to play this map because we uh, even have a statistics when we had Prax uh, with uh, uh, Belchenok on Anubis, and he's playing B Lobby Lurk. So we had a statistics like two to eight. Uh, so two, he killed the B Lobby Bush. Eight, he died with no 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 kill no and no trade. So yeah, it's uh, it's kind of hard to put players on different positions because Belchenok he has. Uh, Incredible aim, and uh, me and the team should use it properly. So uh, he is the kind of wild guy, but uh, I think uh, one wild guy is 
it's it's okay it's okay like uh, not a bit not a big deal but uh, you mentioned if there were two yeah we could have speak about it but there's only one and uh, i think we can adapt the play style for him and uh, be more uh, aggressive sometimes and sometimes be more passive and uh, do some you know golden like golden middle <laughs> let's say like that well, congratulations once again, Jerry, for making it to the playoffs. And you know what? You guys you guys are honestly such a fun team to watch. I love commentating that game. I love seeing like all these little individual plays. And you know, keep at it and good luck for the rest for, for the playoffs. Thank you guys. Have a nice day. Or evening. <laughs> Thanks for the interview. <laughs>